Yo Geeks to Jacetto here coming to you with um, more fluffy stuff. Sorry if it looked weird for me to be talking into the microphone. So, a couple things, a few things, a couple things. I don't know. It depends. One, uh, I turned up the sounds a little bit. Um, I didn't think they were too bad, and uh, I had a friend go and test them as well, and he said they didn't sound too bad. It wasn't like too quiet. I'm gonna put my scissors down. By I play with scissors, but I play with scissors whenever I don't have something to play with, or whenever I'm not doing anything. Actually, I just play with scissors a lot. That's not the point. Anyways, um, so yeah, the sounds, uh, I'm gonna have to get used to my webcam placement. It's like weird. I can't get to like a good median. That'll have to do. This will do. I think I can still see all the text on my screen, too. My webcam shit, guys. You're gonna have to bear with me. Because I was using a different webcam before, as you guys know. As you guys know, but that webcam isn't compatible with Windows 10. So. Well, it is. So, wait, why aren't I using it? Wait, no, it's not. That's right. Yeah, it's not compatible with Windows 10. This webcam is, but it's trash. The other one was trash too, but I thought it was better quality than this one at least. Anyways, that's not what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about was, yeah, the sounds, the sounds I fixed, they should be a bit louder. Same with the voices. They're not too quiet. They weren't too quiet before, I just turned them up a tiny bit. So hopefully you'll be able to hear them better now, including the music that's playing. This relaxing music. And I'm also not going to do what I was doing last episode where I was like saying the Japanese words into the mic like this you know i'm not gonna do that in this episode because that's pretty weird to do um even i'll admit it that's that was really weird to do i don't know why i did it i just mm, decided to say some of those words uh, I, just, I shouldn't have it was weird so i'm sorry if that was hard to watch hard to listen to uh if those parts were hard to listen to i also noticed um i wasn't i don't mm, i wasn't like, I want to say I wasn't as enthusiastic last episode, and I don't know why that is. I think it was just because I kind of forced myself into the game a bit. So, I'm going to try and be a bit more enthusiastic. Kind of hard. It's like almost four in the morning for me, so it's going to be kind of hard to do that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to say. I just kind of wanted to say those things. So, we're going to get right into the story. After dinner, I bring them to the convenience store downstairs. <clears throat> uh, I didn't fill my water bottle. I always fill my water bottle uh, before I start recording because most of the time I'm doing these. Anyone else weirded out by the fact that they're just staring at me, but not only that, they can blink and um, wiggle their ears. <laughs> The store roughly has this layout. It's not that big. The shelves are for goods are over here. This is a freezer, and this is the checkout counter. I point each part of the store to them. See, what I don't like is that, like, like when they're done talking, it doesn't like just skip forward. It's like I watch Japanese a lot, so it's like I'm used to having to like listen to what they say, but also read the English subs. I'm used to doing that quickly. It's not hard at all. You just have to get used to it, but it's not hard. It can be hard at first, but once, like, once you watch, like, a little bit, like, probably, like, I don't know, like, five, ten minutes of an episode or something, maybe even less than that, you get used to it. I don't know. I got used to it really quickly. Anyways, that's not what I wanted to talk about. Okay. The rabbit girl looks very reserved, which I don't think is suitable for serving customers. You... Just when I'm about to say something, I suddenly realize I'm at a loss on how to call them. I can't possibly call them you all the time. How should I call you? You should have a name. Do you remember your names? The girls frown as they ponder over that for a while. <laughs> Fine. I haven't told you my name. My name is Lin Yang. You can 
call me by my name. The name sounds Chinese. I don't know. The vocals are in Japanese, I think. But why is his name Chinese? I don't know. I didn't... I, I don't know. Maybe that is a Japanese name. And I was just okay. Japanese yeah. or something. Also, real quick, I'm just now noticing this. Can we just talk about the, the difference? You guys know what I'm looking at. You know exactly what I'm looking at. Can we just talk about that difference? I guess, like, the way she turns sideways, it, like, makes them, like, look much bigger than the foxes. But, like, I guess we... I guess... Judging from looking at them from the front, they are smaller than the than the, the bunny girls. Well, the hair bunny. She is a rabbit. No, she's a rabbit, yeah. Rabbit, hair, bunny. Those are all the same, aren't they? Yeah, it's just the rabbit right there. I'm sorry, I'm so retarded. God, can't read. Boss. It's fine, don't worry. You can call me whatever way you like. I still need to find a way to call you. How about calling you Rabbit and Fox? Just kind of, it, God, they're like, it's like feminists. It's like women being offended when you call them woman. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot of shit for that probably if people heard me, but I'm just saying that's like the same thing because it's like, you're just calling it how it is. You're just calling it how you see people. Like, if they're not a woman, then I could see how that would be rude, but, like, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to talk about that, that's just, that's really controversial, so I'm not, I'm going to avoid that, I've already said too much, damn, eh, at least I'm not monetized. I'm sure my name is a rabbit, <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Sure, my name isn't Redheaded Stepchild. God. Yeah? I think it's rather cute. Adorable rabbit. <laughs> Is that cute? Ooh, if you call me man because I'm a handsome man, that suits me fine too. <laughs> I just, I just probably skipped some that. Like, I just remembered I meant to shave when I got home after work. By the way, the reason I am up at like almost 4 a.m. is because I did get, I, I got off of work. I know what you're thinking. Okay, I don't know what you're thinking. I can guess. God, I need to not make that a habit. I need to just stop. I need to stop that. What I was trying to say is that I can guess what you're thinking. It's potentially, why are you up this early after work? Because I'm... I ate. Plus, I immediately got on my computer, so... And I have my lights on, so... I'm wide awake right now because of all that. But I don't care. I'm usually up to, like, 6 a.m. anyways. Then what should I do? Shall I give you a name for the time being? Or you think of one for yourselves? It's inconvenient to call them if they don't have names. We often know a person by getting to know their name. If a person has no name, that means the person doesn't exist to others. I don't know how true that is. What? That... Okay, so now that she's turned to the side... No, they are... There is a noticeable... There is a noticeable difference in size. Holy God. They have left the decision-making to me after all. What name should I give to them? I think over while looking at the two girls in front. Anyway, I can't give a non-stylish name at random. There are shelves full of snacks in every direction. How about this? I point at the fox girl. Your name is Cherry. And then the rabbit girl. I swear to God if you just name her Grape. Your name is Purin. <laughs> I suddenly blush upon hearing that. Th they don't sound nice? Anyway, they fit our convenience store's profile. <laughs> oh yeah, you are, let me tell you. Let me eat that rabbit. Oh yeah. God damn it. 
I am really sorry. If I was good at editing, I would edit that out. Jesus Christ. I'm just gonna leave it in. I gotta, I gotta leave in my shameful moments, right? I'm not proud of that one. Things that could be to things that we eat are the most important things to us as living things. God. While Cherry is saying it, she tries to tear open a packet of snacks she got from somewhere. Hold on, this is not for you. I snatched the item at her hand from in her hand at once. My things. Why is it yours? This is an item meant for sale. I put the packet of snacks back onto the shelf. Then it's decided. Your name is Cherry, and yours is Perrin. You are so demanding. You're not even trying to stop him. You literally left the decision up to him. I swear, women are complicated. Women, no, we all know women are complicated, but oh my god. You were so demanding. He literally asked. I'm just gonna say this now. You could have put that like little like um sentence ender thing. Could have put. You could have like you know. I don't know. Well, it does matter because that's like. You're basically eating business, is what you're doing. You're eating business. When I see Cherry look disappointed, I feel a bit guilty. After all, they have just emerged from the wind chime, and it's understandable that they don't have any basic knowledge about this world. Fair. It really doesn't matter that much, but when you eat them in secret, we'll have trouble counting them for the store's accounts. Cherry lowers her head in silence, although I think she might not understand what I've said, she probably knows I'm serious. In future, just tell me if you want to eat, I will agree. <laughs> Upon hearing me say it, this girl looks up happily and even cocky too. She razzingly grabs the packet of snacks which I've just put back, tears open the packet and helps herself to the snacks inside at lightning speed. You. Somehow I feel it's as if she has captured my heart with her beauty. Pern is smiling brightly at me. Okay, I will record what you ate and deduct the amount from your salary for the month. <laughs> After a lengthy conversation, I haven't arranged any jobs for them all this while. Pern, you can work as a cashier. Do you know how to count? I almost said, I almost said one of the words, I'm sorry. It'll be fine. The computer will help you. I can also help if you really need it. No problem at all. No biggie schwiggy. Perrin doesn't look so confident. Well yeah, no shit, they just got brought into this world. Cherry, you seem outgoing. You can work as a saleswoman. You can ask customers if they need anything and lead them to the corresponding shelves. Confidence. She's so conceited. She is worrying me. Okay, Baron, go wait at the count, uh, checkout counter. I will show Cherry around to familiarize her with the place. Next, I walk Cherry through the places where the shop's items are displayed and the way to display them. God, I had chimichangas before recording. Oh man, they were good. Uh, poor man's food, man. Poor man's food. I'm not really, actually, I wouldn't say I'm rich, so, damn. I'd say I'm, like, middle class for sure. Mmm. Yeah, middle class. God. She kept nodding while falling beside me. I wonder whether she really remembered all of it. Don't eat in secret again. If you do it, I will dock your salary by twice the value of the item. So, like, that is a smudge on my screen. There we go. I have, like, a bunch of tiny smudges on my screen. Some of them are more noticeable at certain times, like right now. Just walk around a couple of times to familiarize Hi. yourself. I mean, 
All you have to do is look at the signs. Yo, we got like Japanese, hold on, I didn't realize we got Japanese Lay's, we got Japanese chocolates, or this might be Chinese, I don't know. The voices are in Japanese, that much I know. But I mean, the rest of this probably, not. is that, I feel like those on the right are supposed to be like, not Lay's, but I forgot the brand, Ruffles maybe? Is that what I'm thinking of? Nah, it can't be. Anyways. Sorry to keep you waiting. Sorry to keep you guys waiting, too. I, I go on little, like, I just, little, like, not tangents. That's not the word I, I go off course. I go off track a little bit, which I do it a lot. Sometimes I do it on purpose. Sometimes I don't. When I return to the checkout counter, Pern is standing still over there. Let's begin with the cash register and the code scanner. I open the cash register and teach Perrin on how to use the barcode scanner. Look at this. Point at the barcode and scan it. Oh. Okay, good thing you did not see that Steam notification. And the cash register display will show the price for each item. Here, you can enter the amount of money you receive from the customer, and this thing will calculate the difference from the total price. After which, press the button to give change to the customer. Repeat what I did, please. <laughs> well, yeah, you gotta do your job. Yeah, otherwise, how do I know whether you're, you've learned it or not? Fern seems to be acting slowly, yet she is very careful. Although she doesn't learn fast, she can grasp her basics well. Yeah, you know the procedures by heart, right? Actually, it's no, it's not difficult at all. Relax. Why are they calling him manager? He did tell them their name. Or he did tell them his name. Lin Yang. After teaching her for nearly one hour, Jesus, I think Pern has enough confidence to handle everything as a cashier by herself, Jesus. Okay, Cherry, come here please. Let's rehearse the whole process, then you can go and get some rest. Rest early, so that you'll have enough energy to do your job well tomorrow. We have to, if my store can't earn money, I will have no money to pay your salary. I'll pose as a customer. I'll enter from outside shortly. If you play a customer role, then is there any need to rehearse? He's got a point. What on earth is this girl thinking? It may, it really make anyone feel perplexed. Don't waste time. Let's begin at once. Hi. After saying it, I leave the convenience store, pull the lower hem of my coat, and walk straight into the store. How come I feel so nervous in my own convenience store? As I walk inside my store, I see Pern standing to attention at the checkout counter next to the store's doors while smiling at me. Good, the smile is extremely charming, and I'd give her 120 marks for it. I may smile back at her sheepishly. Next, I pretend to walk towards the shelves with various kinds of bread on it. At this time, Cherry comes over with a weird smile. Ah, uh, that's not. That's no bueno. That ain't gonna work. That ain't it. That ain't it. Ain't it. Cherry takes an ordinary looking bag of chocolates and promotes it to me in a weird manner. That's only a bag of ordinary black chocolates. However, the way she's promoting it makes the chocolates wrapped in gold-colored tinfoil inside look like hazardous items with mysterious powers. Stock. Come on, it's not an illegal store selling something shady. Just give me a warm, personable smile and say welcome to our store. May I help you? That's enough. Though this girl is adorable, why does she speak in such a weird way? 
this girl got imprisoned in the wind chime because she had sold some prohibited goods? I glance over my shoulder and see Pern still smiling at me from behind the cash register. Maybe she got dragged into this too? Failed. Try again. Cherry sounds upset. Try doing it well. You can rest after we finish. There might even be a reward for you. Honey. I'm sorry, I said I wouldn't do that. It just sounded funny. It just sounded funny. The, w the way she said it. I don't even know if I said it right. I'm not going to try saying it again. Upon hearing of a reward, Cherry becomes excited all of a sudden. Oh, yeah. You'll get a reward. She's going to get a bunch of snacks. What did you guys think I meant? God. It depends on your performance. <sighs> After stepping outside, I walk into the store once again with my heart uh, palpitating. I don't think I've ever seen that word written in my life. I don't even think I've said that word ever. Palpitating? No, I've never said that word. If I'm saying that word wrong, I've never seen that word. I've never heard that word. I have never read that word, seen that, or seen that word. God. Hello, welcome to our store. That's her. At the checkout counter, I can see Perrin retains such a fascinating smile. I walk towards the shelves with bread on it. Cherry slowly walks over from behind the shelf. She's blushing. Her smile is so gorgeous and her voice is so beautiful that I feel as if I'm in dreamland and freeze immediately. Jesus Christ. How I wish I could become a talented scholar and wrote a poem as beautiful as the one by the famous Chinese poet Li Bai, where even the white clouds and uh, the flowers would want to help apply makeup on her face. One thousand nine hundred eighty marks. This time we will surely make it. I exclaim loudly. Tomorrow, you only need to serve customers the same way you just you did just now. I can already see. I can already foresee we'll get plenty of customers. Cherry becomes wild with joy. I take the bag of chocolates in her hand, which she is about to promote. This is for you. <laughs> God. Oh, she was gonna eat it anyways. Anyway, my convenience store could formally start its business. I wonder when the bear girl shows up. I tidy my own room and move most of my personal items to my parents' room. I've cleared my room for you, so you can sleep there. <sighs> Cherry stretches herself. <laughs> Mm, good night. These two, these two girls are really tired after working with me the entire night. After they left, after they have entered the room, I suddenly remember the wind chime I have left on the seat on the tea table, seat table, tea table. So I take it and prepare to put it back into the wooden case. It's so remarkable. This item doesn't seem capable of uh, accommodating two girls. I remember. The wind chime makes a fascinating sound. It's so enchanting that it feels as if I'm living in ancient times. With the jingling sound, a slightly fragrant scent of honey wa wafts across. You guys see it too, right? Like, that's, that's cutting it real close. That's cutting it like super close. Can't be, did it happen again? beautiful girl whom I don't know is lying on the ground with her eyes closed. She's dressed equally shabbily as the two girls from earlier and her brown hair is all over the ground. But this time I've already expected such a scene and I don't feel so surprised. They would still come in batches. I stroke my chin involuntarily. What is going on? How many girls does this blasted wind chime hold? Just bring all, bring out all at once if you can. I shake the wind chime in my hands forcefully. If there are more girls inside, I'd like to shake all of them out. 
But finally, nothing else emerges from the wind chime except Cherry and Purin rushing out in anger. <laughs> ah, sorry, sorry. I have to put the wind chime aside. Why would you two get a headache whenever I shake the wind chime? Fair. Cherry is saying it furiously. Oh. By doing that just now, it seems I've woken up the girl with bear-like ears on the ground. When I look at her, she stares back at me with her golden eyes. She's blinking like an innocent kid. You are... <laughs> Who are you? Ah, yes. Before I could finish my question, she spoke first. Do you know her? I turn to Cherry and Purin to ask them, but both of them shake their heads. Okay, let's introduce ourselves. This is a convenience store. My name is Lin Yang, and I'm the owner. The three of you came out of the wind chime. Both of them came out before you. Now, they are my employees. This one here is called Cherry. Hoodie? Cherry is a name that is a normal name. If you think about it, you will definitely be a different name. It's not a good name. On the other hand, you can also think of a nice name for yourself. You two have such a low opinion on the names I gave you. <laughs> Forget it. Just take it that we've introduced ourselves. Do you remember who you are? The girl ponders for a long time before they look up at me. Okay. I have one new, I have probably a steam trading card. Okay, since she came out of the wind chime too, I have, I'd already guessed this result. I was trying my luck though. Puff, I shall call you Puff first. Now that I've, now that I've cherry and purned ahead things, I go straight to the point. Then tell me, what is your name? Puff thinks for a while. Oh, it isn't a nice name, of course not. Oh, shut up, Cherry. Cherry asks me mischievously on purpose. Nothing significant. I just thought of them at the spur of the moment. I think it's easy to remember. What's so bad about it? God damn it. Called out. Yeah, so the names I gave you mean both of you are very important to me. You should fix those weird thoughts of yours, Purin. You'd better stay away from her. With Cherry cutting in on the conversation, Puff speaks coldly after being silent for some time. Er, hold on. You can choose a set of clothes for you down here first. I pointed the messy pile of clothes which Cherry and Pern had left behind after drying them earlier. I'm not forcing you to wear them, but are you really okay with how you look right now? Puff looks at her body. Is there any problem? <laughs> I mean, no, I'm enjoying the view, but that's not the point. It's called, like, mod the modesty? Is that the word I'm looking for? This girl seems to be much dumber than Cherry and Burn. Well, if she thinks it's fine herself, how should I explain to her?
Why are you... What the fuck? Why do I feel like I've never even read this word either? I am a decent person, okay? I didn't. Ah, oh, I really did it. It's really an irrefutable. Done. The scroll got the drift, or she got fried by Cherry's warning. Or, er, I can't make the decision, as long as it fits you. Once you've chosen your set of clothes, go take a shower. Puff, Cherry... Oh wait, Cherry and Purrin, please take her there. I'm going downstairs. At least Purrin is like... Oh my god. Cherry pouts a puff. Come on, I think it's for your own good. How troublesome. When I return to the living room, Puff has taken her shower, changed into her uniform, and her whole body is as fragrant as Cherry and Purrin. Hmm, okay. I secretly observe this girl with barriers. Her cold expression makes it hard to guess what she's thinking. Or maybe she isn't thinking of anything. I only want to know whether it fits her. No. While I'm dealing with Cherry, I take the wind chime to examine each small bell closely. Each small bell has some blood red words written on it. Demons could bring disaster, and this object is to guard against it. I look up at the three girls beside me again. All of you are charming. Except for their ears, which are different from human beings, all of them look harmless and don't look like some manipulative being from ancient times. Based on what Cherry and Pern encountered, I think you can't leave this wind chimes area of control, so you should also stay here. Okay, then I'll let her try. I'd also like to see how the chime works. I put the wind chime into the wooden case and get ready to take it out. Let's go out for a stroll. Cherry, Pern, would you like to come along? They still look, uh, apprehensive. See, I know that word. I know that word. I suppose that fall really hurts. Were the physics really necessary there? Puff looks indifferent. Were they really necessary? It's my convenience store. Why? Potato chips. There are my goods. Is she hungry? Seems Cherry and Purrin were also hungry when they appeared. But you can eat them after you've obtained my permission. I take that bag of potato chips and give it to Puff. Just eat it. She tears the bag open and pours the chips into her mouth. Come here. Aw, oh, she's still eating. I push the glass door open and step out of the store. Puff follows me outside after hesitating for a while at the glass doors. Do you feel whether there's anything unusual? Let's go further. I'm testing. Wind, ch wind chime? Within two steps after we've walked out of the convenience store, the chime in the wooden case seems to start ringing softly. あなたたちどこから毎回毎回私たちを転がらせてわざとやってるんじゃないでしょうね。店長どうして椅子並んですか？私たちただ座って待ってただけなのに。I'm um, sorry, sorry. I just want to check on this wind chimes mechanism. 
この償いは絶対にしてもらうんだからそそうですよ私たちを使って実験するなんて何を試したの二人が急に現れたことが私にも関係あるのあ、uh, wait I just realized The, the store's logo on her outfit went from one side to the other, and that's mildly concerning. Indeed, it has something to do with all of you. Now, I'm certain if you're some distance away from the wind chime, probably around a short distance from my store, you will be forcefully brought back to the wind chime. But if I take the chime with me, you can go out with me. I suppose so. What are you doing? Jerry suddenly lunges at me to snatch the wind chime from my hands. But her hands retract before she could touch the chime, as if she's been hit by an electric shock. Are, are you okay? It seems there's a stream safeguard mechanism on it, so you. So you all can't touch it. True. Let's go back first. I have a general idea on how the wind chime works. Of course. Although I don't mind if you'd like to try staying here and then get pulled forcefully by the chime. So. How much do you hate staying at my place? When we're back on the second floor, it's as expected. Puff also falls down in front of us. It seems the wind chime isn't giving you any privileges. She rubs her head as if she still doesn't know what's going on. So she's just some dense girl with big tits. I don't know either, but I turn over the small bells of the wind chime to let Cherry, Pern, and Puff look at it and draw their attention to the small blood red words. Can you remember anything from these? How about Perrin? Then how about Bo? Oh, I just realized. Uh, I haven't been able to see it before because I've like I since like I slouched down a bit. Uh, the voice thing in the bottom right, it like it indicates like how like long it's gonna that voice is gonna last, like how long they're gonna be speaking for for this bit of text. I didn't realize that because my webcam is blocking it. Same with the text as well. I didn't even notice that. You guys probably noticed it. Probably were like not screaming at me, but were like, "Oh, how come he doesn't see the bar? It's clearly, you know, here." <sighs> That's because you bumped your head. Let it be. Anyway, it's late. Go and get some rest. When I have time, I'll see whether there is any record left behind by my ancestors. So sorry, I will make it up to all of you properly tomorrow. Mm, good night, Perrin. Perrin follows her into the room. No. Certainly not. You. <laughs> She's so simple minded. Um, good night. She's so simple-minded. Oh my god. It's a bit crowded for them, but it can't be helped. My room is the most spacious one in here. The living room that's full of people uh, a while ago has become quiet now. I sit on the sofa and gaze at the wind chime. They've been sealed inside all this while and have gone through many generations of my, fam of my family peacefully. How come they suddenly showed up? Don't tell me it's because I shook it a few times. This is too far-fetched. Did anybody ever shake it? close my eyes if they really if they are really demons as what the bells have written on it what should I do should I seal them back into the wind chime I'm surprised he hasn't thought to call his parents when his parents know about this I'm sure his grandfather would have told his daughter or son whoever about it so 
But when Cherry's naughty look and Pern's gentle face appear to my mind, I suddenly feel reassured. And there's also Puff, who looks silly yet adorable. How are they capable of committing any major offense? They may have another side, which I don't know. I reopen my eyes, only to find the light in the living room seems to have become a bit dim. A lot of things have happened today, and I'm tired. It's so troublesome. I sigh and get up to go to my parents' room. No matter what they did before, they don't seem to be a threat to human beings now, and they have lost all memories of their past. Itching my nose, but they are only three innocent young girls. I smile wearily. But I've released them after all. Whether it's good or bad, I should be responsible for what I did. If they really cause any trouble, I will have to put them back into the wind chime. Forget it. Let's take it one step at a time. I walk into the room, only to notice the bed has piles of stuff on it after I've opened the door. There's no room for me to lie down if I don't clear it. Seems I can't sleep here tonight either. I'm really too exhausted to clear it right now. Let me go downstairs and sleep by resting my head on the checkout counter. Wait, is that the story? I don't know if this is the end or not. It better not be. This might just be like an opening. Like maybe, like maybe what it was before that we just went through was like a prologue, and now like we're getting into the actual story. Honestly, I know nothing about this. Oh, there's an actual cat. Look, I don't know what kind of visual novel this is. I don't know if it's a dating one. I don't know if it's like, uh, just, uh... Or if it's just like a wholesome one with just a nice story. It might be route based, actually. Maybe it is a romance route based. A route based romance. That's what they meant to say. Could be a route based romance visual novel. Who knows? I mean, I'm liking the story so far. Oh, now we get to see what the chimes look like. Oh, and they have symbols on them. I'm wondering if that was actually the end of the story or not. I doubt it. Oh, complete chapter one. Oh, oh, that's right. No, there's like eight chapters in this. I might actually be in for a long series. Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna leave this. Uh, let's see, hold on, uh, quick save. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Alright, that's where I'm going to leave the video. Um, Wow, really interesting. So we got to, we've met the, we've met the bear girl. Um, and now things are going to get more interesting, I guess. From here on out, the story is going to get better. I did look at the Steam achievements for this game. I believe there's like six or eight chapters. I'll have to look back at it and... Uh, let you guys know next episode um so yeah we should be in well if they're all as long as chapter one with how slow of a reader i am each chapter is probably only gonna be about like maybe 30 minutes long because i mean like or maybe not like 30 minutes but maybe like 50 minutes or an hour long like maybe each chapter could be about that on average i've just taken a bit longer um I don't know, but I'm enjoying this so far. The characters, so far the three girls are nice. I really hope there's no, like, sex scenes, because, I'm like I said, I am too lazy to edit, so I don't want to try and edit out any nudity. If I have to, I can try. I don't know how I'm going to, actually. I could try and ask a friend to do it for me if someone can. I don't know. I'll get to it when I get to it, I guess. 
if there is a nudity episode, I'll probably delay the episode, that episode's upload until I can edit out the nudity, or I'll just cover it up with, like, my face or something. I don't know. Um, let's see. What else? Um, hmm. Um, I guess that's it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video because I know I sure as hell did. And you know what? We're going to quick save again. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Just smack the shit out of your like button. If you want to help my channel grow and, uh, you know, fun stuff, uh, you know, hit that subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel, you know. I don't know what to call my viewers. I don't know, Soulless Army? I don't know. There's probably some other ginger on YouTube who's taken that. I don't know. Anyways. <sighs> and if you want to be notified when I upload videos, hit the bell icon as well. Don't be shy. So, thank you guys again so much for watching. I hope you liked it. See you all in the next episode. Peace out.